we're hearing rumors of a supply chain attack against the Trezor hardware wallet. Let's dive into this. Welcome back, everyone. All right. Picked up this story uh, yesterday, and I figured this is important and we should discuss it uh, because I think that I think that not enough people pay attention to supply chain attacks. I am going to, I, I am of the opinion that this wasn't actually a supply chain attack, but anyways, I'll make my case for that. Let's dive into this article. Uh, and this was published on No BS Bitcoin. Guys, these people live off of donations. Um, they do amazing Bitcoin only news and they have an awesome Telegram group. I'm gonna put that in the show notes for the people who wanna go and check this out. It's, it's a great source for uh, for info. Okay. Let's dive into this. Fake Trezor wallets designed to steal Bitcoin spotted in the wild. That's right. Let's induce some fear. It was a classic supply chain attack in which an unsuspecting victim buys an already hacked device. A victim seemingly lost 1.334 BTC after depositing funds into an address displayed by the device. The fake crypto wallet would operate as normal, but the attackers had full control over it from the very beginning. According to the transaction history, they were in no hurry, waiting a whole month after the wallet was credited for the first time before they grabbed the money. I'll just interject and say they were most likely waiting for more. <laughs> They were most likely waiting for more. They saw that they weren't getting any more, so they simply just took it. That's just my opinion, though. Anyways, the unit was bought from a trusted seller through a popular classifieds website, and the holographic stickers on the box and the wallet itself were all present and undamaged. Instead of the original STM32F427, the unit had an STM32F429 chip with fully deactivated microcontroller flash memory readout protection mechanisms. And of course, you could only see these chipsets if you actually popped open the uh, the Trezor device. And here up in the picture, you could see that right here. This right here is the correct chipset, and this is the hacked chipset. The bootloader checks for protection mechanisms and digital signatures were removed, thus getting rid of the red screen problem during the firmware originality check at startup. At the initialization stage or when resetting the wallet, the randomly generated seed phrase was replaced with one of 20 pre-generated seed phrases saved in the hacked firmware. The main safeguard is to buy your wallet directly from an official vendor and choose models with special versions of protected microcontrollers. Even original Trezors aren't ideal in this sense. There are other brands' wallets with better protected chips and extra protection mechanisms. And, and of course, I'm pretty sure no BS Bitcoin is, is referring to the cold card. <laughs> so that's just my assumption. But anyways, look, I, I think um, one of the things that this, this article... Uh, makes it seem which i i do i do want to make a a correction right here the unit was bought from a trusted seller through a popular classifieds website so look uh make no mistake i i don't i, I and in no way do i want to impede someone else's business but you need to realize if you are carrying trezor hardware wallets and you are not the trezor manufacturer i would never buy my hardware wallet from you um i just wouldn't i wouldn't take that chance and and, and again in so far, every single instance, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I, you know, obviously I want to make sure that we're accurate, but in every single instance that there has been a quote unquote supply chain attack, it's not the actual supply chain from the manufacturer that's been breached. It's a later point in the process, such as somebody else bought the wallets, then tampered them right? They tampered with the wallets. They messed with them. Then they put them back in as best they could into the original packaging and just waited, waited for people to buy them. So, so guys, look, definitely do not take a chance. I, I know it seems like, oh, wow. You know, this, this wallet's only half price. Is it half price? <laughs> it's half price for a reason. You know, it's 10% off for a reason. It's guys, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You think you, you know, you think that you're saving, you think that you're saving five or 10 bucks or 10% or whatever it is. You're not saving anything. Just buy it directly from the manufacturer. And it's not just Trezor. Okay. If you're going to get a cold card, just buy it directly from CoinKite. 
Just get it from them. If you're going to get a Jade, just get it from Blockstream. That's all. You know, like, I again, I, I don't mean to impede anybody else's business, but the, the reality is, is that if you are buying a signing device slash hardware wallet from anyone other than the manufacturer, you do have an added vector of risk, which again, I don't want to make it seem as though there is no vector of risk from the manufacturer, but it is greatly reduced. They have, the manufacturer has much more stringent checks and monitoring in their own facilities. Things that they cannot really do when a third party vendor offers to sell their items. Now, before we wrap up this clip, Today, uh, speaking of hardware wallets, we, we had something else that that I think was was worth noting, um, and that is that is Ledger's new service. And now, before before we dive into this service, I just want to remind people here: back in December of 2020, Ledger had a bit of a problem with uh, with with uh, their customer database. Ledger was targeted by a cyber attack that led to a data breach in July 2020. Yesterday, we were informed about the dump of the content. And this is back in 2020. Okay, so it's not really yesterday. It's 2020 yesterday. They were informed about the dump of the content of a Ledger customer database on Raid Forum. We believe this to be the contents of our e-commerce database from June 2020. Now, why am I mentioning this? Because... Today, there was a tweet which was quickly retracted. Ledger launches distributed KYC-based cloud seed recovery service. So I want you guys to keep in mind, they, they couldn't keep their customer list safe. Do you want them having any piece of your private key? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway, so they, they quickly deleted that. And here we go. Previous articles state that Ledger Recover Service splits a wallet recovery phrase into three encrypted shards and distributes them to three custodians. The service is supposed to cost $9.99 per month. I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't go with this at all. Guys, stay away from this. You do not need a company that has been compromised multiple times, okay? Now, I'm not talking about the hardware wallet being compromised multiple times. Don't make that assumption. The company has been compromised multiple times. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you can't trust them. So I would definitely not trust any part of my private key with this company. <laughs> they've, they've clearly proven that they cannot be trusted. They've clearly proven that they cannot keep your data safe. So I, I just thought that that was a fitting, you know, a fitting piece uh, about Ledger. Like, I know it has nothing to do with the supply chain attacks, but it, it's just, again, personal responsibility cannot be, cannot be overstated enough. And we unfortunately have been brought up in a culture which somehow demonizes personal responsibility or maybe demonizes isn't the right word. Maybe it's, it, it's frowned upon. Because you can trust the institutions, the institutions, all the institutions, they're all here to help us, right? They are here to provide value. Don't believe me? Well, I'm having a hard time saying it myself. So look, really at the end of the day, they are here for their bottom line. Now, whether or not your data is a victim of that bottom line, well, that, that, that's just what happens. Okay, and at the end of the day, it's not their data that's breached, it's yours. So how much do they really care? They don't. Anyways, guys, uh, look, like I said at the beginning, the hardware wallets, just buy them directly from the manufacturer. I personally do not, um, I, I've never, uh, I, I've never supported Ledger. Um, and then of course, hearing about their data leaks helped solidify my opinion. Um, I, I'm not going to make any recommendation for a specific wallet because everybody has a different, um, everybody has a different capacity. Everybody um, has a different learning curve and different, you know, comfortability, so to speak. So, you know what, you're going to find the hardware wallet that that's right for you. Um, but if I can make at least a suggestion, if you're looking at a hardware wallet from a company where they have multiple data leaks, you might you you might just want to objectively look at some other hardware wallets as well and you know maybe maybe not go with the one that has had data leaked that wraps up the show like subscribe and i will catch you all
tomorrow. Tomorrow.